the Rubicon Primaris. The induction of the Primaris Marines into the Adeptus Astartes was not an easy process by any means. The chapters of the Space Marines are arch-traditionalists, and some are conservative in the extreme, having upheld the same warrior traditions for thousands of years. Of course, the express command of Rebute Gilliman, Lord Commander of the Imperium, eased the transition into the new era. For the Ultramarines and the vast majority of their successors, the word of the risen Primarch was good enough, and many chapters welcomed the Primaris Battle Brothers gladly. But there were those, especially secretive or willful chapters, who saw the incorporation of the Primaris Marines into their ranks as a dilution of their gene stock and a betrayal of their long-held culture. Some amongst the Adeptus Astarte suspected that the Primaris Marines, being stronger, more durable, and closer in blood to the Primarchs themselves, represented the obsolescence of traditional battle brothers. No amount of reason or pointing out that what the Primaris offered in raw ability they lacked in experience and versatility could salve the spiritual wound dealt by the sight of the newcomers wearing their heraldry. The Primaris Marines of the Ultima founding had been swiftly inducted into brotherhoods that the incepted aspirants of yesteryear had given everything they had to join. Questions. Heavy with the weight of destiny hung in the air, would the Primaris Marines ultimately make the traditional Space Marines extinct? Would the identity of each chapter's homeworld be diluted, with so many thousands of new recruits sourced from the stasis vaults of Mars? And was it possible for a Space Marine to be transformed into a Primaris, inheriting the benefits of Adeptus Mechanicus Arcano Science whilst retaining his personality and experience. The last question had been raised in Adeptus Astarte's chapters across the galaxy. It was a query Lord Calgar had asked of Belisarius Call himself, and had discussed with those of his fellow chapter masters. He was able to meet in person. Debate raged as to whether such an act was even possible without having deadly consequences for the recipient. The data that Archmagus Call had already amassed on the subject suggested there would be a 61.6% failure rate until the process could be perfected, which would take time. Then there was the moral concern of whether the process should be attempted at all. The dilemma was proving divisive indeed. There were those who claimed this was the ultimate destiny of all Adeptus Astartes, while from other quarters came whispers of rejection, even mutiny at the prospect. The lords of the Ultramarines came to the conclusion that to ease the transition from centuries of imperial tradition to a new order, the theoretical of that raging debate would have to be put into practice. It was Marnius Calgar that stepped forward as the first test subject from the ranks of his storied chapter. It was a process... He did not survive, though like his Primarch before him, he was to rise from the threshold of death once more. The operation to transform Calgar from a traditional space marine into a Primaris was conducted in an auto-sterilised med vault, which, with the tang of counterseptic and crowded with elaborate medical servitors, the room was dominated by the vast marble slab at its centre, artfully carved with runnels to collect the copious streams of blood that would result from the procedure. The surgery was to be extensive and agonising, a fact Marnius knew well from Call's tediously thorough description of his masterwork process. A Primaris Marine is gifted three new organs, in addition to the 19 grafted, suited and chemically implanted into an Asprian Space Marine. These are the Magnificat, which is buried deep within the brain to stimulate growth and to intensify other organ functions. The Belisarian Furnace, which releases a burst of hyposteroids and corticostimulants when a mortal blow is dealt so the Primaris may fight on. And the sinew coils, cable-like lengths of Durasteel, 
that encase every tendon and sinew in a metallic sheath that gives tremendous resilience and strength. During the implantation of these advanced organs, Manius Kalgar was cut open from crown to heel, his ribcage was cracked apart, and, at the climax of the operation, his physiology suppressed to the point that his life slipped away. Choirs of cyber cherubs sang blissful, overlapping requiems, swaying with aspergiums that sacred incense might guide Kalgar's spirit back to his body. The corpse lay in state, its flesh rent and open to the air, for what seemed to those watching like an age. Ten long minutes ticked by, then twenty. Skull-faced surgeons clicked and muttered and stabbed at the tortured flesh. Those around the periphery of the Apothecarium Theatre held their breath in dread. Then, with his wound stitched closed by a thousand jabbing needles and his mighty heart electrified to beat once more, the newly forged Lord Calgar was brought back to life. He broke his bonds with a strangulated, blood-flecked roar, stumbling to life as his Belisarian furnace brought him to battle readiness. Calgar had clawed his way back from beyond the brink of death, and in doing so, he had shown to his chapter that the transformation was possible. The Rubicon Primaris had been crossed, and a new path opened for the Adeptus Astartes. Well, well, that's interesting, isn't it? I came across this little piece while I was going through the uh, Vigilus book that I've got in my hand now. I'm going through the Vigilus campaign for a thing. This has always been my problem with the Primaris. In and of themselves, I've got no problem. Uh, I think that the... The art direction they've gone through is a little bit cringe and bad. And I know I understand a lot of people like it. I really don't. Uh, you know, having robes under their armour, having just, I don't know, like overly Baroque, which is funny for 40k, I know. Skulls everywhere. But it just seems so clunky and wrong. Uh, that I don't like the juxtaposition of this advanced armour look about them mixed with this, I don't know, like really like cliché crusader look the old marines i don't know maybe it's just my own personal taste i just don't like it but anyway my main problem with it was how are you going to integrate marines into chapters now again the vigilist campaign was two years ago now and obviously it was this the, it was created at the same point or at least envisaged at the same point they were bringing out the primaries marines obviously it was the first campaign uh, it's an odd one because it's the last point we see Abaddon the Despoiler. Um, it mixes in a lot of elements that we, we haven't seen progressed, basically. Hopefully they're going to be now because they're, they're exploring the Indomitus Crusade. But it seems a bit, I don't know, considering we've already had Guy Haley cover the end of the Indomitus Crusade. And also a massive retcon is coming there because he's got Malnius Calgar in there. And no point does it mention that he's Primaris. So I think that was an error there, lack of communication between the authors and the games development team. But yeah, this has always been a problem for me with how are you going to get like these 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 warrior brotherhoods who are ridiculously religious in terms of their how they operate, how they function as a culture. All of them are going to be, you know, even the ones that are a bit more pragmatic and so on. You're looking at a crusader brotherhood, a monastic order, you know, even like the raptors or and chapters like that who are a bit more pragmatic, a bit more sort of open minded, I guess you'd say. And then even more so, the, the thing they did with the Dark Angels has always struck me as bizarre because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This chapter, who is the most secretive chapter in the world, who will, who will destroy entire planets at the, the whiff of a fallen. Yeah, they're just going to accept these dudes coming into them, you know. And there's a whole thing with Terminators, like Terminators are going to go because Primaris can't fit in them. If you're telling me a Primaris can't fit in a Rhino, then no way they can fit in a, in a suit of Terminator armour. We've all seen Game of Thrones, there is no such thing as a breastplate stretcher, we know this. But this seems like an attempt to sort of answer that question, and a lot of the sort of earlier little things that came out, like for instance about the Blood Ravens and stuff, there was a there was something interesting there, there was an element of like, ooh, you know, like maybe they're purging the chapters that refuse, maybe there is going to be a rebellion of chapters, and I thought there was going to be a thing of like, those chapters on the other side of the Imperium maybe would say nah <laughs> to the Primaris, because they're cut off from the Imperium proper, 
or those chapters who have no loyalty to Gilliman by blood, you know, other than, oh, he's a Primarch, that's cool, but he's not our Primarch, you know, he's not our father. There would be some kind of pushback there. But even like Black Templars now are just accepted, which is, it's bizarre to me because these chapters who are, these, these groups of people who are, as it says there, arch traditionalists, extremely conservative, uh, especially the ones who are extremely religious in their outlook, you know, fanatics, zealots. They would not accept something that so fundamentally alters what they are, you know, goes against, goes against the, the vision of the emperor. And I've talked about this before. I haven't talked about it for a while, the whole Primaris thing, but this really brought it back to me. And this seems like an attempt to, to answer that question. But this is one, like, they've stopped even asking it, which, to be fair, thinking about it, it's probably the best approach. Just have Primaris as Space Marines. Try not to make a big deal about the change and just sort of, hopefully, everybody forgets this and eventually all of, I mean, because all your Space Marine stuff is going to get mothballed. You know, you're still going to be using it, but it's going to be able. The rules are going to be in a PDF that gets updated every year, and eventually they'll stop updating it, and it's all just going to be Primaris stuff. You know, uh, some of the tanks will survive, the land raider, rhinos, etc., uh, because other factions use them. Uh, but it is like oh, I don't know. Like I really hate the Primaris tanks. I think they're so ugly. <laughs> they're so ugly, and like it doesn't make sense either. Like I know, like you're going into this thing where. Belisarius call his advancing technology but not that much not that much and not across the whole galaxy and it's like a, a track a track is going to be much easier to repair and maintain than a hover tank you know like that's like an amazingly complex piece of technology in this Imperium which hasn't got that level you know it's not supposed to have that level of technology available to it on the whole you know at least for mass production for military uh, you know for military stuff even though Space Marines get the best of the best Still, you know, it's 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 a it's a big ask. It's a big price to pay for a for a floaty tank. When you know, tracks really work. <laughs> that's why the Imperium uses them. That's why they're that's why they're STC because they're easy to maintain. They're easy to produce, and and so on and so on. And that seems to have been lost a little bit, you know. And and it's a big part of the 40k law, you know, that the innovation is not looked upon kindly. And I just don't think there's been enough of um. I'm listening to uh, the second Watchers of the Throne novel at the minute. I can't remember what it's called. But there's there's a lot of talk in there. Chris Wright's doing a really good job of showing like uh, the need for reform and stuff within the Imperium and this push there. And we've seen it before with Gilliman removing people from positions and replacing them with his men. But I just don't see the, the pushback from the rest of the Imperium, from the other power structures of the Imperium, from the other people in the Imperium. And I just find it really unbelievable that, you know... The Black Templars are cool with Primaris. The Dark Angels are cool with Primaris. Yeah, come into our inner circle. Now, have you ever heard of Luther? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. You know, and and the Black Templars, it'd be like it'd be simply like these these creatures are heretics. These these are abominations. This is this is a subversion and um, a corruption of the Emperor's vision. This is wrong. This is evil. Destroy them. You know, like like there should be more conflict now the whole thing about them turning uh, existing characters into primaries basically because they've got some law behind them they've got a name behind them i understand it i understand why they're doing that you know like turning ragnar i understand why they've turned ragnar blackmane into a primaris i don't understand why they've let ragnar blackmane chop gasgul thrackers off and completely emasculate him as a character you know so he isn't actually a threat anymore because ragnar i mean ragnar's a good guy you know did I say Ragnar Lothbrok? I can't remember. I'm not going back to check. If I did, I apologise. <laughs> Ragnar Blackmane. Yeah, I must have done. Yeah, Ragnar Blackmane. He's a good character and stuff. But do I really believe that he's just... He, out of all the Space Marines that have been involved in Armageddon, with Gaskell Fracker, you know, the whole Yarrick thing, everything, then for some reason, Ragnar rocks up with his Frostblade and chops off Gaskell's head. And then he gets stitched back on. Like he's a cartoon character. Which I know is a thing. I know that is a thing with orcs. But you can't do that to Gaskell Fracker. It completely makes him weak. That's a whole other thing. Anyway. That's a whole other thing. They've ruined Gaskell for me, basically. But I understand why they're bringing back these these characters. Turning them into prime errors, you know. Um, don't worry. Everyone that's actually got a name will survive. Only people who 
only the, only space marines that no one really cares about will die. So just normal space marines who haven't got a, a separate entry in the codex, a special character. They're the ones who'll die. The, the ones we like, the ones we know, they'll all survive. And that's happening now with Mephestan. It'll happen to Dante. And I think there's a whole thing with Dante becoming merged with the Sanguinor. Like Mephestan has become merged with the, the Blood Knights, the, the, the dark side of the, uh, the Blood Angels. Dante will become the Sanguinor, I think. I don't know what I'm talking about now. Anyway, hopefully this made sense. <laughs> I found this piece very interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you've understood what I'm trying to say with my rant. Um, I think the law with the Primaris is very muddled. And I think the way they're getting past that now is just to ignore it and push forward. And hopefully people forget. And yeah, uh, uh, gradually, if you're a big Space Marines and Astartes fan, uh, the Adeptus Astartes are going away. Uh, it's going to be a gradual process. They're going to be boiling you like a frog. They're all going to get stripped away. It's all going to go away. It's all going to be Primaris going forward. That's the future. And you're going to have to come to terms with that. If you're big into Space Marines, you're just going to have to appreciate that Primaris are Space Marines now. And all your old stuff is going to become defunct and disappear. Maybe not this edition. Maybe not next edition. But eventually, eroded uh, into the into the, the Legends thing. I think they call it the Legends Collection, which is the dustbin. And, yeah, some things are already there, like a uh, Space Marine Chaplain on bike, you know. And you're going to be able to buy these things for a while longer, but they're going to just disappear as well. Anyway, that's just me ranting. Um, I find it really peculiar. Like the primary, like I said, the Primaris thing, to finish up, to finish up, the Primaris thing in and of itself is fine. But I don't think they've been consistent with the lore of the universe, with how they've introduced them and how various factions, individuals... And uh, that all the different factors would 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 hit off each other would uh, would work. I think there would have been a vast degree of pushback. A lot of the stuff doesn't make sense. And like for instance, the whole dreadnought thing, I've seen a couple of times, and this just doesn't make sense to me on a fundamental level, right? And I know like forty k is like oh, it's science and magic, basically. You know, it's a space opera, blah blah blah. But still, this thing really annoyed me. Okay, and I'll tell you. Some space marines, I've seen it a couple of times, they've taken some Primaris characters and they've said he was so wounded, even a Dreadnought wouldn't sustain him. So they decided to do an operation on him to turn him into a Primaris. And it's just like, you know, that doesn't make sense. If he's not going to survive in a in a Dreadnought, how's, you know, put, turn him into a Primaris a more viable option? If the, if the survival rate is... You know, worse than 50-50. Uh, and I suppose you might make the argument the Belisarian furnace implanted does this and la la la. I suppose. It just like it just it rubs me the wrong way. But that's the future, that's where we are. Primaris Marines are here to stay. They are the future. Space Marines are old hat and they are gonna go. And every character you know in, in space every space marine character will eventually become a Primaris. So that is the future. Um, again, there was the whole thing with Seth uh, at the end of Devastation of Baal. That hasn't been hit on again. I'd really like to see that explored more. The Space Marines' attitude to the Primaris. Josh Reynolds did a few bits and bobs with this in some of the novels that he's written recently about that. Uh, particularly that one, is it called Apocalypse? Where they encounter the... Um, the uh, <laughs> Spoilers! The word bearer who founded the Imperial Church. So, you know, it was a dreadnought and lives on this planet, on this shrine world. <laughs> that's a big spoiler for you but basically yeah there's a lot of talk there about the Primaris and the word bearers encountering them and the, the existing old space marines encountering them and discussing this And it's an interesting area, it's a really interesting area and something I'd like to see explored more and the novels have done a good job of exploring it but at the second we haven't seen any more advance on that but like I say a big retcon is coming because in Plague War when Gilliman meets and for some reason slaps down Marnius Calgar in public uh, puts him in his place for no reason, really. Like, it was a tad unnecessary. Uh, yeah, he doesn't mention that. Oh, yeah, yeah, old Marnius. Oh, Calgar here, he's a Primaris. He doesn't mention that. And for some reason, I mean, it always strikes me as odd that pro Marnius Calgar travelled from Ultramar all the way over to Vigilus. Like, could no one else do that? Was there no one else closer from one end of the galaxy to the other while this great rift is occurring and anarchy is everywhere? Anyway, that's just a little rant. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. And maybe I've spoiled this recording. Maybe I should have just made it normal and just done that and then cut it off there. I don't know. Me ranting. Thanks for everybody supporting the channel. 
please give this video a like. Let me know in the comments what you think, and we'll see if there's sort of if I'm just alone here because I know other people think this. The primary thing, there's stuff to like, but there's some problems with it. It's basically my my issue. There's some fundamental problems with it, uh, but uh, like most of it's fine. I think it was just badly implemented. I'm gonna go. Bye bye.